Hey, good evening, how are you? It's a uh, Monday night, it's Monday night about 11 o'clock, 11.02 p.m. in Central Florida area. Temperature's about 50, 55-ish degrees over here. Not doing good, the Christmas spirit is here, it's in the air, it's in my house. Hopefully, hopefully it's in the workplace as well. All right, this is uh, when we a good time that we get to uh, celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus' birthday party, all right? And it's, all month long it's actually all year long that we celebrate and then worship and praise him and say thank you thank you father god for sending your only son to die for us i like sharing it there and sharing it there but yeah thank you thank you so much god uh we love you jesus thank you for what you did being born the virgin birth you know in a manger all right uh Awesome. We gotta get into this because this will go longer. Uh, I like to read from Purpose Driven Life. I like to get through these book, do devotionals, but here's a really good one that's impacted millions of people throughout the entire world. Uh, and I want more people to have access to it. Um, so I'm gonna read it, and this is a good way to force me to read it too, and to share it with friends that I uh, dearly care about and I know will appreciate it. So this will be day three. The intro and day one and day two are already on the YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel. You can check it out there. And there's a playlist that you can use so you can listen to this while at home working out on the treadmill or in the car while driving to work 20 30 minute commute you can uh, fill yourself with the word of god hmm. all right cool what drives your life i observe that the basic motive for success is the driving force of envy and jealousy hmm. ecclesiastes 4 4 king solomon right the man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder a waif a nothing, a no man, Thomas Carlyle. Everyone's life is driven by something. Most dictionaries define the verb drive as to guide, to control, or direct. Whether you are driving a car, a nail, or a golf ball, you are guiding, controlling, and directing it at that moment. What is the driving force in your life? Right now, you may be driven by a problem, a pressure, or a deadline. You may be driven by a painful memory, a haunting fear, or an unconscious belief. There are hundreds of circumstances, values, and emotions that can drive your life. Here are five of the most common ones. Many people are driven by guilt. They spend their entire lives running from regrets and hiding their shame. Guilt-driven people are manipulated by memories. They allow their past to control their future. They often unconsciously punish themselves, sabotaging their own success. So when Cain sinned, the guilt disconnected him from God's presence, and God said, you will be in a restless wonder on the earth. You will be a restless wonder on the earth. That describes most people today, wandering through life without a purpose. We are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. God's purpose is not limited by your past. He turned a murderer named Moses into a leader and a coward named Gideon into a courageous hero. And he can do amazing things with the rest of your life too. God specializes in giving people a fresh start. The Bible says, What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. A lot of times that's why we worship and praise and it's just that that overwhelming joy. Okay, okay, we gotta get into this. <laughs> uh, what relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. Uh, just like relieving debt. If you got student loan debt, credit card debt, mortgage debt, if it's gone, it's like, nice, this weight goes off. But this is sin, sin debt that we had. He paid for it on the cross. Okay, we gotta get into this. Okay, okay, okay. Many people are driven by resentment and anger. They hold on to hurts and never get over them. Instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness, they rehearse it over and over in their minds. So resentment-driven people clam up and internalize their anger while others blow up and explode it onto others. Both responses are unhealthy and unhelpful. Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. Why your offender has probably forgotten the offense and gone on with life, you continue to stew in your pain, perpetuating the past. Listen, those who have hurt you in the past cannot continue to hurt you now unless you hold on to the pain through resentment. Your past is past. Nothing will change it. You are only hurting yourself with your bitterness. 
for your own sake. Learn from it and let it go. The Bible says to war yourself to death with resentment would be a foolish, senseless thing to do. Many people are driven by fear. Their fears may be a result of a traumatic experience, unrealistic expectation, growing up in a high control home, or even genetic predisposition. Regardless of the case, uh, regardless of the cause, fear-driven people often miss great opportunities because they're afraid to venture out. Instead, they play it safe, avoiding risk and trying to maintain the status quo. Fear is, self, is a self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming what God intends you to be. You must move against it with the weapons of faith and love. The Bible says, well-informed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is not yet fully formed in love. <laughs> Many people are driven by materialism. Their desire to acquire becomes the whole goal of their lives. They drive to always want more is based on the misconceptions that having more will make more happy, more important, and more secure. But all three ideas are untrue. Possessions only provide temporary happiness because things do not change. We eventually become bored with them and then want newer, bigger, better versions. I like to interject, some of us just want to get more, to be generous, to give it back, to give it back to God and take care of the body of Christ and be generous and caring and loving for people. Uh, let the Christians control the money and it's going to be awesome. Okay, did I say that? Okay, I did say that. It's also a myth that if I get more, I will be more important. Self-worth and net worth are not the same. Your value is not determined by your valuables. And God says the most valuable things in life are not things. The most common myth about money is that having more will make me more secure. It won't. Wealth can be lost instantly through a variety of uncontrollable factors. Real security can only be found in that which can never be taken from you. Your relationship with God. Many people are driven by the need for approval. They allow the expectation of parents or spouses or children or teachers or friends to control their lives. Many adults are still trying to earn the approval of unpleasable parents, daddies, fathers, the stepfathers, those Vietnam World War II fathers, right? Ugh, it's all right. They love you. They just never were loved. They had a, their heart had a leak and it had that void. Jesus fixes that. All right, we're going. Others are driven by peer pressure, always worried by what others might think. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in it. I don't know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is to try to please everyone. Being controlled by the opinions of others is a guaranteed way to miss God's purpose for your life. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. There are other forces that can drive your life, but all lead to the same dead end. Unused potential, unnecessary stress, and an unfulfilled life. This 40-day journey will show you how to live a purpose-driven life, a life guided, controlled, and directed by God's purposes. Nothing matters more than knowing God's purposes for your life, and nothing can compensate for not knowing them, not success, wealth, fame, or pleasure. Without a purpose, life is motion without meaning, activity without direction, and events without reason. Without a purpose, life is trivial, petty, and pointless. The Benefits of a Purpose-Driven Living There are five great benefits of living a purpose-driven life. Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. We were made to have meaning. This is why people try dubious methods like astrology or psychics or to discover it. When life has meaning, you can bear almost anything without it. Nothing is bearable. A young man in his 20s wrote, I feel like a failure because I'm struggling to become something and I don't even know what it is. All I know how to do is to get by. Someday if I discover my purpose, I'll feel I'm beginning to live. Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. In the Bible... Many different people express this hopelessness. Isaiah complained, I have labored, labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. 
Job said, my, my life drags by day after a hopeless day and I give up and I am tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. Hope is essential to your life and air as air and water. You need hope to cope. Dr. Bernie Siegel found he could predict which of his cancer patients would go into remission by asking, do you want to live to be 100? Those with a deep sense of life purpose answered yes, and we're the ones that most likely to survive. Hope comes from having a purpose. If you have felt hopeless, hold on. Wonderful changes are going to happen in your life as you begin to live it on purpose. God says, I know what I am planning for you. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you a hope and a good future. Jeremiah 29, 11, right? You may feel you are facing an impossible situation, but the Bible says God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. It defines what you do and what you don't do. Your purpose becomes the standard you use to evaluate which activities are essential and which are. You simply ask, does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? Without a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which you base decisions. Allocate your time and use your resources. You will tend to make choices based on circumstances, pressures, and your mood at the moment. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much, and that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. It is impossible to do 